All right, now for part B, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start you off, um, but I'm going to um, pause in the middle of it because there's plenty of opportunity for you to use the knowledge that you already know um, to work through this and see if you can come up with an answer yourself. Now we have all this other information to deal with, and it says, that golfer strikes the ball, we've got this initial speed of 16 meters per second, so I'll file that away. I know the flight time, 4.53 seconds, and I know how far it ends up, 155 meters away. So I'm at some point gonna need to substitute these in, probably, I mean you've seen this enough times by now, probably to find out and evaluate constants of integration because we're gonna integrate as we go through here from acceleration, from velocity, and to determine what the constants are at each step, I will need these constants to help me, uh, and need this data to help me. From there, I need to calculate an angle of projection, and let's just, for the sake of consistency, let's all call that theta. How do I do this? Where do I begin? Well, I want you to have a look at the information that's provided, right? Um, did you notice in part A, it gave us this clue. It said, hey, gravity is 9.8. You're gonna need that, right? Uh, and that's sort of the nudge to say, hey, it's terminal velocity, you're considering this vertically, right? In part B, the question says it lands 155 meters away. So I want you to think about this for a moment, right? If you were to think about the situation, if we were to come up with the um, Cartesian equation, which mercifully we don't have to, um, and then graph it, right? You saw this on Tuesday. You'd get this thing which looks like a, um, a parabola that someone sort of rammed uh, off, off from the side um, because it's sort of slowing down horizontally. Maybe not that obvious, but I did this just to, to make it a little obvious and extreme and then it lands somewhere, right? Now when the question says it lands 155 meters away, where is that on this diagram? And the answer is, it's here. This landing position, right? So this 155 meters away, in other words, it's actually a, a horizontal, it's an X piece of information. Uh, it's not a Y piece of information. In fact, we hardly have to answer anything about Y. Um, we've already found out from part A what the terminal velocity is, but you don't have to find out like how high does it go, at what time does it reach its maximum height, those kinds of things. Those are vertical displacement questions. We've been given horizontal displacement information. So. Following on from part A, which dealt with y dot, we're now going to transition to think about x dot and x double dot. So, uh, let's think about this, uh, this information up here, right? We've got this drag force that is proportional to the square of the velocity, and I highlighted right at the start that there's no mention of mass, right? So therefore, um, when I think about the force um, acting horizontally, force equals mass times acceleration, so horizontally I can say that force which by definition is mass times acceleration, what is it equal to? Well, the question said the drag force is proportional to the square of the velocity. It's slowing me down, so it's acting in the opposite direction. Um, it's proportional, and I've worked out that drag coefficient, and the drag coefficient horizontally should be the same as the drag coefficient vertically. Um, by the way, I might just pause for a moment and ask you in the chat how I know that. How did I know that the drag coefficient horizontally should be the same as the drag coefficient vertically? Because in reality, it isn't, um, but, well, sorry, I should say in reality, in some situations, it isn't. But for this question, we can actually know. So I, it's just, I wasn't planning to do this, but it's such an interesting um, thing to say and something I don't want to skirt past. Can you go ahead and post in the chat? If you have no idea, just say, I have no idea because that will give me an indication I need that. Or does anyone have a thought as to why in this particular situation we ought to expect the same drag coefficient horizontally as vertically? Any takers? Okay, great suggestion from Varen, which is firstly, um, yes, I am absolutely traveling through the same fluid horizontally as vertically, doesn't change. Uh, Barnes suggested, okay, there's no wind. Uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, I suppose you could, um, you could say there's no wind, however, that would just add another force, I guess. And if it was wind, I mean, I guess depending on, hopefully we won't, won't have too much changing wind, that would just be another thing to include in my equation, right? Small difference in altitude, so there's a minimal difference in air density. Oh, I really like that. That was not where my brain was going, but I'll take that because, uh, you know, assuming we have a golfer who, who can't hit it into the stratosphere, and so it's like, well, up there, I have less air resistance to worry about. Uh, and now Sean said, aha, here we go. I was, I was wondering if anyone would get there. It's a ball, so the air resistance will be the same for vertical and horizontal. I'll push on that just a little more. What kind of ball is it? It is a, it's a spherical ball. Maybe if you haven't played golf before or haven't seen a golf ball before, maybe that's a bit unfair to expect. Um, but not all balls are spherical. Because it's a spherical object, 
um, it's perfectly, it's you know the most symmetrical thing you can have in three dimensions, right? So no matter which perspective, which angle you look at it, um, horizontal, vertical, or some other oblique thing, even if you're not orthogonal, you'll get the same cross section, right? Um, we often try and eliminate this by saying it's not a golf ball or an object, it's a particle, so that whichever angle you look at it, it's the same profile, um, but that's what's going on here. And I guess I'm trying to contrast things like a parachute. Um, which experiences vertical drag that um, is enough to slow you down, but is trying not to experience horizontal drag because that will take you off to somewhere else. Um, or things like a plane, which are trying to do the reverse, right? A plane is trying to give you lots of um, vertical uh, drag, so you have the lift underneath the wings um, and not much horizontal drag, so you can go fast. And as Mrs. Lee has pointed out, um, AFL football or um, yeah, just rugby league football, anything like that. Okay, sorry, that was um, an unplanned segue, um, an unplanned aside. We haven't even finished our horizontal uh, force equation here. So I've got um, F over here, as it were, horizontally, mass times acceleration. I'm acting against it. I've got the same drag coefficient, that's what we paused on. And then it's proportional to the square of the velocity. So the velocity is X dot, and then I square it. So this should look familiar from the equation that we wrote up here, but here I was saying, you know, in this balancing situation with terminal velocity, here I'm saying this much more generally, okay? And you'll notice there is no mention of mass on the right hand side, and that's important because apparently this drag force is not proportional, doesn't care about how heavy the golf ball is, which makes sense. Okay, now I need to get to um, some set of equations that can help me to use the information in the question. And I know things about velocity um, and I know things about displacement. So I'm going to need to integrate my way up there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start you off. I'm going to highlight the difference between this and the question we did on Tuesday. And then I'm going to give you a decent chunk of time to work on this on your own. And then you can check back in with me in the chat if you think you've got an answer. Okay. So to integrate up, right, I've got this x double dot over here and to integrate that I'm going to make things a bit tidier and get that mass constant over there on the right hand side. And keep in mind, I do know what k is um, and I do know what m is, but I, I'm not writing it just yet because it's just going to make my working messier. I'm happy to just leave it as uh, pro numerals, right, because you can see up here my numbers are gross and messy, right? Okay, so from this, I, as I've done many times before, need to pick a, a form for acceleration that makes it easiest for me to uh, use the information that I've been given and get towards the information, um, or the rather the destination, the question I've been asked, right? So I won't labor this point. Is it going to be VDV on DX? Is it going to be half V squared? None of those. I want to get towards time, right? Because I've been told uh, that it's airborne for 4.53 seconds. So therefore, the particular form for acceleration I'm going to use um, is dv on dt, but it's not v in this case, it's x dot. That's the particular velocity I'm interested in. So uh, dx dot on dt, and um, nothing's really changing over here on the right hand side. Okay, now at this point here, you're like, oh, I know what to do with this. I need to sort of separate out my variables a little bit like we did in extension one and get ready to integrate. So in order to do that, think carefully about what you've got here. And as I promised, contrast this to what we had on Tuesday. Do you remember, sorry to scroll very quickly away, um, this is what we kind of created um, on Tuesday's lesson where we were looking at projectile motion with resistance. And we looked at it and said, whoa, hold on a second. That looks a whole lot like exponential decay. And so we just launched straight into an AE to the negative KT situation, right? Um, I know a few of you had a look at the video that explained a bit more of the first principles like integrating and why you end up with the exponential function and so on, um, but not all of you. So if that's still like rattling around in the back of your brain, please go and have a look at it. It's on the Canvas page. But here's the contrast, right? This is not the situation we're looking at. We're looking at a quadratic drag um, model um, this morning. And so you don't look at this and say, oh, it's exponential decay. This is not exponential decay. This is gonna be something different when we integrate. So I'm gonna do my separation variables and see what I end up with. When I put over uh, all of the, I've got these this sort of dx dot term over here. So I'm going to divide through by x dot squared. So that will give me x dot to the power of negative two. Do you agree with that? Just index laws there. Um, I'll leave the dx dot there on that side and I'm going to kick the dt over to the other side. So that gives me minus k over m dt. And at this point here, I'm sort of ready to go. So um, I can integrate from here. So I'm going to be so lazy. On the next line, all I need to do is add integral signs. So I'm going to do them here, but I'll just highlight them in a different color for you. Okay. 
Now, even though it looks weird, see through the mess of not notation, and x dot and all that kind of thing, this is, uh, you could call it V if you like, um, and integrate with respect to V. This is just polynomial, like this is just a power rule, right? All I need to do is take that power, increase it by one, and then divide by the new power, right? And at the moment, my power is negative two, so it's gonna increase by one to negative one. And then I'm just gonna divide through by the new power. Dividing through by negative one is the same as multiplying by negative one. So I've just integrated the left-hand side. No exponential in sight, that's because this is quadratic drag, not linear drag. There's the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, uh, we just get this linear function in time, and now I've got a constant to deal with, okay? Now, um, here's my last nudge, and then you guys are gonna go for it, right? As promised, we're gonna need to find out, um, oops, sorry, that was really sneaky. That should be x dot, not x. We're not at displacement yet. Um, I'm gonna need to use some initial conditions here, right? Um, I'm gonna need to find out, okay, at time zero, what can I say to evaluate this constant? Now, when time is zero, we're gonna start at the origin in terms of displacement. So I can say when time is zero, x is zero. That's great. But I can't use that yet because I don't have a displacement equation. I've got a velocity equation. So you're gonna need to work out what the horizontal velocity is. And when you go back to the question, they, they rudely don't tell you what the horizontal velocity is, they just tell you the initial speed. And as we know, speed is a scalar, doesn't care about what direction you're going in, so um, it's even off at an angle, and that angle is what we're trying to find. So what you can need to do is go all the way back to thinking about how do we separate these things? I'm gonna to have to resolve forces, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, you can do this a lot of ways, um, but for me, um, I go back to this, and I know all your teachers will do it slightly differently, but. I always like to go back to sort of this rectangle here in which my projection vector sits. And I know it's gonna have a speed of 60, so that's the magnitude of the projection vector. Um, I think we decided to call the angle of projection theta, and we don't know what that is. But from there, I can work out what x dot and y dot are equal to because I just have this sitting in a right angled triangle. Can you go ahead and um, I actually don't need to worry about the vertical um, velocity, the initial vertical velocity, but can you post in the chat what our initial horizontal velocity will be just on the basis of this right angled trig? Go ahead and tell me what you think it is. When t equals zero. Aha, well done. Varen's even been a, a high, uh, an overachiever and gone to find the Greek letters. Absolute thumbs up, well done. Um, yes, it's gonna be 60 cos theta because in this triangle here, and uh, also credit to Liam, thank you, um, cos theta will be x dot on 60, so therefore I just have to multiply through. So that's 60 cos theta here. Um, obviously, if we needed it, y dot would be 60 sine theta, but that's just irrelevant for us. So I've got an initial condition. And I can use that to substitute in um, to find out what the constant is. So, as promised, um, you've still got a long way to go, but I'm gonna pause. I think you have, having integrated this quadratic drag uh, model and found out it's not an exponential, it's something else. Um, we've got this uh, indefinite integral, and you have the information you need to work out what that constant will be. Eventually you're gonna to have to do this again and get to a displacement equation, work out the constant you get there. Um, so I guess I really should say this is constant one. Let's just describe that like so. So I'm gonna pause for a moment. I'm gonna give you a good 10 minutes um, because there's a lot of numbers that are gonna be flying around here. And uh, I know when I was giving this question a go, I fell into a couple of little um, crevices and nooks and crannies just with the arithmetic, so be careful. Um, have a go. If you are struggling along, um, just pop us a message either to everyone or in the direct messages. Uh, but if you have an answer, um, let us know. It's 8.05, so I'm gonna give you till, um, yeah, I'm gonna give you till quarter past, um, which is a big amount of time, but there's a lot of twists and turns here, and maybe you're still catching up your working. If you arrive at an answer sooner, just let me know, and that'll give me an indication that we can move before quarter past. But I'm gonna go on mute, and uh, you guys can have a go at the question in peace.